Hello and welcome everybody to my new video. This will be the introduction to a playlist dedicated to soils. I have been working for almost 20 years as a scientist on organisms living in the soil, on microbial fungi and nematodes, so I may venture to tackle this difficult topic. Soil, however, is much more than mycorrhizal fungi or nematodes and in most of these areas I have not much experience than anybody else. So in most cases I will present soils to you more or less as a layman. This image here already contains sort of the complete program of the coming videos. When you talk about soils, you can distinguish three different aspects. You can talk about physical aspects, about particles and pores, you can talk about chemical aspects or about biological aspects. All these aspects are important and they will be all be covered. Today, however, we are looking at still another aspect. We are asking why are soils important for us? Or better, in which respect are they important for us and which features should they have? The answers to these questions will help us not to get lost once we entered the labyrinthine ramifications of soil physics, chemistry or biology. So why is soil important for us? First thing, of course, because plants are growing in the soil. We need these plants. We need them for food, we need them for wood, and we need them as the basis for the ecosystems we are inhabiting. Plant growth, however, is not the only thing we need. Next thing, and maybe even more important, is water. Without soil, no fresh water, or at least no groundwater. Rain is falling onto the soil and is either penetrating the forming them forming groundwater or staying on the surface forming lakes and rivers. We obtain fresh water from lakes and rivers as well, but our best and most stable source is groundwater. Soils decide how much groundwater is formed, how fast this occurs and which quality it has. Last but not least, we need soil for mechanical stability. We need stable grounds to build our streets and houses on. And we prefer soil to rocks in this regard since soil, in most cases, provides the right mixture of stability and plasticity. There are many other areas where this right mixture between opposing properties is a typical feature of our requirements towards soils. There are more things we need from soils, but for today, let's focus on these three points. Plant growth, water supply and mechanical stability. Let's start with mechanical stability. We need it for building up our houses and streets. Plants need it for anchoring themselves. Both plants and humans only need a certain degree of stability. The ground we are building on also has to be shapeable. The same is true for plants. Soil has to be stable, of course, but it also has to be rootable, soft enough to allow the growth of rootlets. So the optimal degree of mechanical soil stability is compromised between different requirements we have. Which properties apart from mechanical stability should soils also have for optimal plant growth? Plants have many requirements. The most basic one perhaps is that they need air and water. At the same time, roots constantly have to take up water to keep the plant working, but at the same time they constantly need oxygen. Without at least some access to fresh air, they will use up all the oxygen within their reach. Soils therefore have to be able to transport both water and oxygen, which in turn is only possible when they contain an extensive system of pores, allowing air and water to percolate. One further important demand of plants is their need for mineral nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, etc. In nature, soils are responsible for recycling such nutrients, for transferring nutrients from dead organisms and their excrements towards young growing organisms. In agriculture, nutrients in soluble form are applied from time to time. Soils again decide to which extent these nutrients actually reach the plants and whether they, pro they are provided sufficiently until the following addition of nutrients. Are there some common features to all these requirements? Two things. First, in most cases we can define a certain quantity optimal for plant growth. Plants do not need as much water oxygen mechanical strengths or nutrients as possible, they just need the right amount. Second, they need this right amount for quite some time. Plants may somewhat change the requirements during their development, but basically they need sufficient water, oxygen, etc. as long as they live. In reality, however, there often are times of scarcity and times of surplus. Rainfall is not distributed evenly over the year. Nutrients from animal excrements or from fertilizers are not constantly added, but in pulses. 
Good soils are able to buffer such pulses, to store things in times of surplus, and to provide them in times of scarcity. This ability of soils to buffer things, to provide water even when there was no rain for quite some time, is also essential when it comes to our own water requirements. Springs and wells are working even after a few weeks without rain. With increasing droughts, we start appreciating how important this is. But soils can do more in the case of water. They can transport it and filter it on its way. In general, water from springs or wells is cleaner than water from lakes. So soils are crucially important for securing our demands for clean water. Similar as plants, we don't need neither too much nor too little. We just need the right amount and we need it every day. In summary, I think the most important thing about soils is the stability they provide. And it's not only mechanical stability. It is also hydrological stability, stability of water supplies and chemical stability, stability of the presence of certain nutrients and the absence of certain toxic compounds. This stability comes from the ability of soils to absorb water and nutrients in times of surplus and to liberate them in times of need. Not all soils are able to do this in the same extent. Which factors are important in this regard? What is enabling soils to buffer water or nutrients? We are going to find out in the coming videos.